Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you Iran flooding now, Tuesday, March 24th, 1.30 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Heads up, Iran. You've been overrun. Iran bans non-official crowdfunding appeals because they don't want you to get any money from Westerners. Yeah, they love you there. Holy square. Keep calm. It's boom time. Flooding in our own country. Roller coaster ride of temperatures this week. Heads up, Wisconsin. You're going to peak at 57 Wednesday. Smiley face. Boom. Down to 38 and snow and slut schmutt on Saturday. Whew. The calendar says spring, but ding, ding. Al Gore's in his hole and he has nothing to say about it. Winter just doesn't want to quit in south central Wisconsin. With good chances for snow this weekend, the National Weather Service forecast is rife. R-I-F-E with snow and showers and rain showers and showers with power starting Thursday night and continuing into Saturday. Now the best chance of snow will be coming early Saturday morning as the high pressure system moves through with the cold front. No accumulations are in the forecast since we're not close enough to the weekend for meteorologists to actually make the prediction. Have you ever heard such nonsense? We'll predict it in a minute. Record river flooding begins to recede in KC. Thank God. Kansas City, Missouri. Reuters. Record flooding along the Missouri River left death and destruction in three Midwestern states appearing to have crested Sunday without causing major damage. Thank God no more rain happened here. Continuing to move downstream, which will, which means Kansas City is out of the woods. But if you're south, holy sh Risk of major Mississippi River flooding remains high. We're talking all the way up Minnesota. Holy sh That's north of there. The risk of flooding in the Quad Cities hasn't changed over the last few weeks. The National Weather Service in Davenport says spring flood outlook for the Mississippi River continues to show well above normal chance of major flooding. But there is a lower risk on tributaries, thankfully. In Wisconsin and Minnesota, a lot of heavy snow has not melted yet. So we're going to play this by ear because we're no queer. We're here to give you the information that you hold dear. Noah's spring outlook. Here's my neighbor sitting at a picnic table up right here on Wolf Creek. Just a week or so ago. That's how we text. Noah's Climate Prediction Center produces seasonal outlooks to help communities prepare for what's likely to come. Central Craton, well below average for the next three months. Precipitation, well above average for the entire country, except for California. Sorry. But you already got it. Oroville, damn much. Let's take a look at the models. Who's the winner? Right where I moved. This is where the most water in the entire northern hemisphere is going to fall. Right on my farm. I think I picked that well. Solar minimums equal greening of the deserts, especially in the Four Corners region. South San Juans receive epic snowpack and water year after year. A grand solar minimum would mean epic water forever, which is why I'm right here in the epic water. Five to ten feet of snow predicted through April 5th. Holy! <laughs> look at this in the northeast, the beast. And look at this. Look at the Appalachians here. 
Sunday, March 31st. Monday, April 1st. Tuesday, April 2nd. Snow down in South Carolina. Looking fine. Uh, North Carolina picking some up. Virginia, West Virginia. Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, snow. Almost the entire state of New Mexico getting snow in April. And if you're in Nebraska and you think you're going to plant food, there is a rude 18-inch awakening of a blizzard setting up to bury that region two times. First blast this weekend. Second blast next week. Oh, my God. Is that a tweak? Look at these totals here. 36 right there. Heads up, Silverton. You're about to get pummeled. We're going to get buried in avalanche warnings. Now, Nebraska seeks federal aid for ag losses from harsh weather before the flooding even occurred. Their winter was so harsh in Nebraska. And then the flooding. And then I just showed you multiple blizzards burying Nebraska. Midwest flooding has killed livestock, ruined harvests, and isn't over, folks. No thanks. It's not done. Farmers are worried for their future, and likely they should be. Nebraska is about to get, get hit this weekend and next week with over two feet of snow. There's no tilling going on in those fields, no harvesting, no seeding, no nothing. And just when it seemed like spring was on the side of the prairies, the big warm-up, global warming, Alberta style is followed by a stick it in your arse, we're not done with you style. Gomer Pyle aisle. Are you, are you kidding me? I don't even know what I'm doing now. I'm moving. Shh. And it's fucking it all up. I hope this has been recording. Holy sh... Yeah, are we recording? Okay, you can hear me. For Tuesday, but we've got some ice pellets in Edmonton and some cool air moving in just briefly before temperatures start to rebound. Do a dab. So let's follow that bouncing ball. One on degree diamond. On Tuesday morning for Calgary, minus one in Edmonton with a little bit of fog in the forecast. Six degrees in Edmonton for Tuesday afternoon and rain showers, but... As temperatures climb, we're likely going to see those ice pellets first before we see the changeover. To Heads up, Lloyd Minster. I've just done a pop, pop, Pinsta. good, 14 degrees. There's the cold front that's responsible for the snow to the north and the ice pellets. It sinks south. And temperatures will be dropping behind it. But we're also seeing high pressure moving in behind it. And high pressure signifies sunshine. So uh, once we get beyond Wednesday, things start to... Shut up! Once you get beyond Wednesday, she's going to talk about the global warming Saturday. But what she doesn't talk about under the flabby arm here, look at that. That's nasty. Back up to All right, there we go. We move that. Is It's getting back to three degrees on Monday, which will not be your fun day, Calgary, Alberta, where you're back in Al Gore's hole once again. Whew. Holy shit, why can't I move this? Hey, Ace... Grabber, scream, grabber, pro. I pay hundreds of dollars for this shit. Fix it. Jesus. Moisture from British Columbia moves in Alberta. Saskatoon, Dolphin, Winnipeg. I can pronounce all these cities and do it definitively. That's why you're listening. This is absolutely nothing but me talking in sentences. Temperatures remain at seasonal values to kick off the work week, which will be a tweak because Monday it'll be cold and snow. Winter isn't done with yet in Alberta. As moisture picks up and takes names, Hinton and Jasper, 20 centimeters, at least from the bees from the west. I don't know where you are, Brett Stumpf, but you're in, if you're near Red Deer, you're just going to get a tippy touch, one to three centimeters. But there will be no planting. It's called Mud Fest. You know what's funny? Ha <laughs> ha! Boom! Greenland's glaciers are growing. Those pricks. After all the children they put in front of the plasma balls and brainwashed to death, we're booming them. Because NASA has to actually predict on growing glaciers. 
because that's not even what we're talking about. But we're going to keep calm because we showed you something that we shouldn't show you. Key Greenland Glacier growing again after shrinking for years. NASA study shows. Say it age shows. Our predictions are coming true. Is it true? <laughs> Is it the cosmic rays have reached to modern maximum? Are we going into Grand Solar? Washington, a major Greenland glacier that was one of the fastest shrinking ice and snow masses on Earth that global warmness leached onto and shoved down your throat is now growing again. So shove it back in their throat, please. A new NASA study finds. The Jacob Schaffen Glacier around 2012 was retreating at 1.8 miles a second, according to alarmists. And that has all stopped. Oh. This was kind of a surprise, said douchebag at NASA. We had no idea it was coming. But then we started watching Diamond's channel and we were like, holy shit. The data looks completely different now. Is that a foot in the universe? Holy. Oh my God. What's going on? We got used to a runaway global warming system that was shoved down our necks, said Geologic Survey of Denmark, Greenland, Ice, and Climate Scientist Jason Box. Who can suck my? The good news is that it's a reminder that it's not necessarily going that fast, but it's going. In fact, global warming is going so fast that key Greenland glaciers are now growing again. After the alarmist said we we're all going to burn up. And there's still a global warming employee that's a ge geologist that claims he's a geologist named douchebag number one, Jason Box, who can suck my. Is the good news that it's global warming is not necessarily going that fast, but it's going. So accordingly, warming causes freezing now. It causes glaciers to grow. Hey, Box, please check your thermometer. Your future is over, you fucking loser. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. Box is the new global warming guru of doo-doo, said you you how about if I just play that for the next hour and we wait for Jason Box to come on live I doubt it oh my god is Doug Vogt here is it the Micronova right now I didn't buy a fucking pound of rice oh my god we're all dead oh that hurts so much am I drowned yet am I breathing underwater oh my god that's amazing oh I have my scuba on well weathered pebbles on Mars imaged by at Mars Curiosity Mahali camera on Seoul 25 2356. None of this shit matters. I don't even know why you listen to me. Look at this. These are fucking river jacks on Mars. You know where river jacks come from? Rivers. No rivers up there. They got burned off by the Micronova, which we're preparing for to come in 26 years, 8 days, 9 minutes, and 14 seven seconds. Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota suffers two weeks of flooding. You know why? Because they're Native Americans. These pricks are paid to go pretend that they care about these people. Oh, God damn it. I'm so sick of that. Hey, I can't wait for the Micronova so that you all die and you can all suck it. Because I'm ready. <laughs> Let's play it now. <sighs> I know. I'm such a condescending prick and you want to comment on how much of an asshole I am. Do you know how much of an asshole you are? I doubt it. <laughs> Do a dab to those assholes. Wow. Wow. Bye-bye, New Zealand. You're cut off. 
Global warming much? To Al Gore's present to you. Oh, the whole bridge is going. Taking it stand by stand. Do we have it, folks? Wow, those engineers are my hero. Man, they really did a great job on that bridge. The state of emergency has been called on the West Coast due to torrential rains, cosmic ray increase, grand solar minimum effects increasing. It comes after West Coast Bridge was washed away after hours of severe rain battered the region. Now, these engineers claim that this could withhold that and 10 times. But these are end times and these are D-bags that are lying to you so they get their paycheck. They don't give a about your safety come take a look and do a dab at the safety of your infrastructure New Zealand Or we wouldn't even be able to be with you right now. Oh, the whole bridge is going. Holy. Oh my God, the whole bridge is going. Say it ain't selling. How oh, global warming. Oh my God. Thank you, Al. Shut up. Get in your hole. The whole bridge went. <coughs> I can't move this now. I pay like $80 a month for this, and I can't even move that. Holy sh... Let's fix that, man. What is going on there? I can't wait to debug that. So if you're in New Zealand, you're feeling it. I know it. But that's just the beginning. Wait for the tsunami. Wait for the... Kermadec Ridge to hit an 8.8 .8 and set off a 180-foot wall of water headed towards... God knows where. You know where. Right towards you. North Shore. Now, Iran is banning crowdfunding to help the people in this region. Those are the powers to be that care about your ass. Do it, Dad. Right, I'm just kidding. We already saw this. We, you started the video with me with this 19 minutes ago. Shut up with these people. Like five people know what's going on. 361. Give them a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Euro News in English. But we're going to get to the next channel that we, the only channel we care about. Do a dab. It's amazing. It's worth it. Dab worthy. Today, live. CBS ain't showing you this shit, folks. Only Diamond can bring you this. Real time. Dab time. Hit that thumbs up. Super chat me. I dare you.
Do you see those people on those cars? Look at this. That's a dude right there. These are people that are going to their deaths. I can't even believe they're not taking selfies. I just want you all to know that we taught you how to be this stupid. It is our fault. It is the Western world that has taught you to not be prepared and to be scared and to run into your car in a flooding river and to try to drive it away to save it because these material possessions are important. Whew. But they're not, man. Material possessions are fake. All this pollution, all these landfills, all this garbage, it's unnecessary. Just like your entire life is unnecessary because you're living it wrong. And it's so difficult for me to tell 8 billion people that they're all living their life wrong. Well, 5 billion anyway. But I digress. Get back to nature, man. Take off. Use your vacation days. Smell the dirt. Eat it. And buy some fucking weed already. God damn it, you're pissing me off. We have a long way to go and I am disheartened. I have 54 tabs open. For your pleasure. And I only feel fear coming from the masses. Everyone is scared. Hey, if you haven't been told, fear is a liar. Do you remember that fairy tale you were told and you were all scared? Yeah, there's no one, there's no boogeyman under your bed. Nobody's in your closet. It's fake. It's a setup on purpose so that you're a little tweaked out, freaked out, scared little prick that can't adapt so that you're beholden to these beasts. Creepy fuckers, aren't they? And then we got like the Kubrick version and then the NASA version. Like the, we actually went there, but it wasn't that exciting. So, and then what we were doing, we were hiding from you. So we took the Hollywood version and we showed it to you. And now everyone figured it out. If you haven't seen the work of August Dunning, astronaut, total disclosure about reverse engineering alien technology, then you need to pick up your game. I can't spoon feed you everything. Everything that Bob Lazar said was true. And we can prove it. Unequivocally. The U.S. government is in control of alien technology for six decades. I'm sorry, eight. LeakCon Where will you be when the shit hits the fan, man? <clears throat> wow. 
Do a dab already. Run for the pizza. Go get it. Run for it. It's like... Do you hear that? It's happening. Seismic update, no quakes of note, thankfully. The sea flares that came our way produced very little in the way of geomagnetic activity to affect the Earth. We're waiting for the solar polar fields to reverse and there will be a big one. And it's happening shortly. The moment we hit solar minimum for cycle 24, the event will occur. Shivalush, Fuego, Bromo, Dicono, Sabancaya. We have Reventador hitting 16,000 feet, Sabancaya to 22,000, Fuego to 15,000. Space Weather News. Let's look at the solar wind charts. So we're currently in electron storm right now. Entered it hours ago. It's a minor event. We probably won't get to KP4. And there's the charging is minimal on satellites. And the geomagnetic storm predicted to come down to Iowa is not happening. Nada. But the triangle is in the danger zone, so we'll watch it closely. Plasma speed has barely gotten above 320. We can't even puff puff pass. We're not even worried above until it hits 420. You know what's funny? Scientists urge holistic study of Cascade volcanoes. And what they warn about in this article is that compartmentalization has destroyed science. Specifically, specifically volcanology where one graduate student studies this volcano and another one does that but no one cares about the collective nature of how volcanoes affect the earth destroy civilizations all erupt at once explode at VEI 8 regularly every 200 years you queers no one cares and they're like why don't scientists care because they don't get paid to discover the truth. They get paid to deliver the farce. Massive Ebola outbreak continues to rage. Case count surpasses 1,000. And civil war ensues. This is not looking good. The people that are against the invasion of the West and the Ebola vaccine are fighting back and they may take a flight to the US and just cough on everybody or Europe or Denmark are you ready the outbreak that has been raging since August may take up may kick up a notch as Emerald says bam and as Diamond says boom holy sh they might put it in those plasma bars you Buy in Spencer for $12 and you'll just touch it and get Ebola. Right where you right where you're trying to run for the pizza. Violent attacks and lingering distrust have hampered medical response throughout the outbreak. Earlier this month, militants attacked a treatment center and on and on. And now conspiracy theorists are claiming that people are shipping Ebola all over the country, all over the planet. Aztec relics could lead to the first royal tomb in years. But if they actually found it, you won't know. They're going to take all the gold and smoke it. Matter waves and quantum splinters. This paper just coming out yesterday. Physicists shatter the Bose-Einstein condensate. Get different pieces every time. Sometimes it's a Faraday wave. Sometimes there's granulation. Here's the Bose-Einstein condensate above. Now, according to Rice University, physicists and colleagues in Australia and Brazil 
They have shown that we don't know shit about anything. <laughs> so, it's brilliant. <laughs> I'm amazed every single day that they actually... Pr hey, take a look at these river stones on Mars. These are river jacks. Leah made a path with them. Na NASA Mars rover Curiosity spots peculiar pebbles. Yes. It's amazing. Those are very curious. If you want to know about Matt, NASA's Mars rover Curiosity and the pictures they've taken and follow them, here you can see March 6th, 14th, 18th, 19th, 23rd, and on. <clears throat> Take a look at their trip through Monument Valley, through the Canyonlands. It is epic. It's a curiosity, if I've ever seen one. How the Little Ice Age changed history. Well, first, it changed art. The deadly truth behind Peter Bruegel's The Elder Idyllic Winter Landscape. Now, if this is too much jargon for you, The reason our channel went viral years a year and a half ago was because I printed a mashup of all of the art from the Little Ice Age. And not a single piece doesn't have snow. Which makes you think, why did none of the artists paint warm, comfortable scenes for 300 years? Because it was always cold and snowing. Totally blowing. Too many Peter Bruegel, the idol of winter landscapes, the first significant sheens of their kind in the European art, in part she atmosphere of festivity, indeed. The Flemish artist's quaint snow scenes can often be sheen from the front of the Christmas cards. Du hast ein kleines Schneewurzen. The figures in the painting skate on frozen rivers, play early versions of the ice hockey with sticks and rocks an attempt to catch birds in a frozen landscapes. I can't keep that up. I don't even know what that means. But this guy's a queer mo. I would never dress like that. But apparently he's freezing his ass off. It's easy to forget just how variable the climate is. If you live in the global warming world, in the narrative that you have been indoctrinated into for decades... But the earth, in fact, across geologic time has been shifting every 72, every 172, every 300, 400,000, 4,000, 12,000, 100,000 years in a cacophony of nested hierarchic cycles of climate variability untold to the masses. You're so brainwashed, you think things are linear. One way. Pay your taxes. Kiss my axes. On, on, on. Brainwash mania. A world entirely covered in ice from pole to pole. The so-called snowball earth. Is sometime something we find hard to get our hands around. Except 26,000 years ago, that's what we were dealing with. Even though... The longest and oldest period of total or near total glaciation, the Huronian, lasted for 300 million years. That's way past your pension. A world without ice is so hard to visualize, though it is by comparison a much more recent phenomena, perhaps only 30 4 million years ago, crocodiles swam in a freshwater lake we know as the North Pole. And palm trees grew in Antarctica. But as we uncover the fraud that has been fed to you, trees grew in the North Pole that were tropical just 2,000 years ago. Not only that, crocodiles were in Antarctica at the same time. Crustal slip much? Are you picking it up? The mainstream is feeding you garbage based on no facts. Do you see any links here to this article? No. You know why? Because when you make a fairy tale up, there are no links. 
because it is a fairy tale. If you look below my video and all of the 1,014 that I've produced in the last year and a half, you will see 1.9 million links to actual documentation of what I'm speaking about. There is probably no one on earth that has more links to more facts than I've provided in the last two years anywhere. And I challenge you to provide a better source of information than the Oppenheimer Ranch Project based on the fact that we give you every fucking link and the New Yorker gives you bullshit and gay Spanish guys standing on dead people. I don't even know what's going on. If you want to know what's your future, check out what they knew back in May of 2013 at the Actuary Summit, the new Grand Minima, prepared by Brent Walker, presented to the Actuaries Institute. You see, because six years ago, the powers that be wanted to know how to shift the insurance market to cover their ass. And what you get here is 34 pages of facts on the new grand minima. Crop loss, food security concern, solar emission, the atmosphere, sun forcing climate, magnetic portals, jet streams, ho, oh, polar vortices. I never heard of those. If you want to prepare, come to the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Preparedness Store. I've loaded it with everything you need, and I continue to add products. If there's a product that's not in here that you need, email me at Oppenheimer Ranch at Gmail, and I'll put it in there, like swimwear. Now, what you're looking at is an artist's representation of a Micronova. And this is Diamond's representation of hazelnut cream indica dab. It's amazing. It's so smooth. It's like coffee. You know who that guy is? Douglas Vogt. We are here. The theory of multidimensional reality is in here, as well as the clock cycle. Doug Vogt started the Die Hold Foundation decades ago, decades before some of you were born. He uncovered the clock cycle and the fact that the Hebrew alphabet was invented through this toroid. It's absolutely mind-boggling. And Doug Vogt and I talked today at length, and I'll be flying his wife and him into Lee Kong. Well, he will be giving a talk on all of his work. But I mostly want to smoke pot with him and go to the VIP dinner, to be quite honest. I don't even know if he does that. We don't even have pizza there. So if you're VIP, you're going to get like some kind of really fancy shit. But we'll go out for pizza at lunch. I promise. <coughs> the entire world is changing. Some people will not be able to adapt. Those of you that are watching the channel are those that are adapting. The energy is overwhelming. It's scary for some people. I mean, it's creepy. It's like a nightmare. But that's just your perception. Is it live or is it Memorex? You're living in a holographic universe. Doug Vogt will explain it to you over cocktails Friday night at LeeCon 2019, May 17th. 
I might even be there. I might be doing yoga on the main stage. Who knows? It's anyone's guess. There will be plasma discharge there and children staring into the light. Thanks to all our Patreons. It's not all doom and gloom. It's a reset. It's rebirth and renewal. I know it's hard to deal with for some of you, but start detaching now. You have, you have time. But you may not have time until the grid collapses. That's why we implore you to start growing your own food and stockpiling dry goods. We love each and every one of you. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Kubrick knew it. That's why he agreed to the films. We've been reverse engineering alien technology for decades so that an elite few can save their ass in the changing times. It's Doug Vogt, in my opinion, that the majority of the population listening to this information can surpass the elites this time. We can organize. We can rationalize and then we can prepare for what's coming. Stop staring into the ball. Get off your ass and start working towards the new Kubrick future. Keep calm. It's boom time. We love you. Be safe. Spencer's is awesome.